Hello everyone, how are you all? I hope you all are doing well. So here I am for the recap of the chapter Plant Kingdom. This is a very important chapter, right? We have discussed all the detail in our lecture and today I'm going to basically do the revision for you guys and at the end also we are going to solve some of the questions. So without any further delay, let's start with our chapter today. So plant kingdom in plant kingdom we have already studied about the various system of classification right first natural system of classification came uh, which was only based on the morphological character and then natural system of classification came which based on external and internal characters then came phylogenetic system of classification which was totally based on phylogenetic relationship which means evolutionary relationship in which we study the evolutionary history of the organism and we decide whether we should put them into the same group or not right so this basically was a different system of classification given by different people and what we are going to study in this chapter is first uh, in Kingdom Plantae, first we are going to study about algae, then bryophytes, steridophytes, gymnosperm and a brief about angiosperm. So without any further delay, let's start with our discussion. So here as you can see, algae, what, do you, what is algae? Algae is one of the lowest plant. It is mostly aquatic, not differentiated which means we cannot see root leaf like structure in algae which means they are thallus like they are thalloid they are thalloid we cannot see any leaf root and stem in algae they are undifferentiated their main body is their main body is gametophyte we have discussed gametophyte and sporophyte gametophyte is haploid right so when we see a body of algae the main body of algae is gametophyte which is a gamete producing body and it is always haploid haploid means when every cell is having two sets of one set of chromosome such condition is known as haploid condition i'm again repeating when a cell having one set of chromosomes such as condition is known as haploid now algae do not form embryo algae they are the only group of plants that do not form embryo from zygote so they are non embryophytes right so beta algae are the non embryophytes they do not form embryo in their life cycle remember algae is the lowest plant and they don't form embryo algae is basically classified into uh, three classes chlorophyce, rhodophyce, and pheophyce on the basis of what pigment is present in them, how or how many flagella or how flagella are arranged, flagella are arranged in the cell of these algae, what are the products they are storing in their cell, and what is the chemical present in the cell wall of their cell. So, on the basis of these category or uh, these characters the algae is divided into three classes chlorophyce means green algae chlorophyce means green algae rhodophyce is a red algae because it appears red in color pheophyce is a brown algae because it appears brown to olive green in color brown to olive green in color that's why <coughs> it is known as brown algae now first we are going to discuss about their cell wall so cell wall in the cell of green algae is made up of inner layer of cellulose and outer of pectose both are sugar so cell wall in the cell of green algae is made up of outer layer of cellulose and inner layer of pectose let's see rhodophyce rhodophyce has also has cellulose in their cell wall also pectin but they also have polysulfate like agar and carrageen agar and carrageen both are commercially used for various products basically they help in the formation of jellies so they are commercially used and what is polysulfate here beta 
पॉलीसल्फेट इज नथिंग बट अ हाइड्रोकोलॉइड हाइड्रोकोलॉइड सल्फर कंटेनिंग हाइड्रोकोलॉइड इट इज नथिंग बट अ सल्फर कंटेनिंग हाइड्रोकोलॉइड हाइड्रोकोलॉइड मीन्स which can absorb lots of water which has a high water absorbing capacity so they have agar and carrageenan so we can extract agar and carrageenan from the cell wall of the cell of red algae let's come to pheophyce they have cellulosic they also have cellulose beta all plants have cellulose in their cell wall they have a gelatinous uh, gelatinous uh, covering known as algin algin is nothing but uh, also a hydrocolloid but it does not contain sulfur so it is a non sulfated hydrocolloid it is a non sulfated hydrocolloid which means it does not contain sulfate and hydrocolloid means good water holding capacity hydrocolloid means good water holding capacity so agar and carrageenan we extract them from the cell wall of red algae and algin we extract it from the cell wall of brown algae now let's discuss about the habitat where do you find these uh, group of algae green algae is basically found on mostly on fresh water and red algae is mostly found in marine water and some can be found in fresh water pheophyce are rarely fresh water they are mainly marine they are also mainly marine they can be found in marine water right so these are the comparison of cell wall and habitat in various group of algae next is about their major pigment beta in chlorophyce because it is green in color chlorophyll a and chlorophyll b are the main pigment so the main pigment in the green algae is chlorophyll a and chlorophyll b however carotenes and xanthophyll are also present carotene are orangish pigment and xanthophyll are yellowish pigment let's talk about rhodophyce they have chlorophyll a they have chlorophyll d but they are not the dominant pigment because if they are the dominant pigment it would appear green but they, they are not the dominant pigment they have a special pigment known as phycoerythrin which is a red pigment they have a special pigment known as phycoerythrin and this is the main pigment this is the main pigment phycoerythrin is a red color pigment let's come to pheophyce pheophyce has chlorophyll a chlorophyll c but that's not the main pigment the main pigment here is phycoxanthin the main pigment here is phyco xanthin which is a brown color pigment so the brown algae appears brown to olive green in shade and it is the main pigment so main pigment here is phyco xanthin in red algae it is phycoerythrin now let's discuss their what kind of food they store beta chlorophyce store starch in the form of pyrenoids inside the chloroplast i'll tell you what are pyrenoids and also they store oil they also store oil so what are pyrenoids beta pyrenoids they are the body which are present inside the chloroplast having protein and starch having protein and starch so this outer covering is of protein uh, sorry starch and this inner is of protein this inner is of protein this body is present inside the chloroplast and this is known as pyrenoid so yes starch is stored in the form of pyrenoids in green algae let's talk about red algae beta in red algae the food which is stored is floridian starch which is a special type of starch whose structure resembles whose structure resembles to glycogen you must have studied about glycogen and amylopectin in biomolecules 
यू मस्ट हैव स्टडीड अबाउट ग्लाइकोजन एंड अमाइलोपेक्टिन इन बायोमोलिक्यूल्स ऑफ फ्लोरिडियन स्टार्च इज अ स्पेशल टाइप ऑफ स्टार्च हु स्ट्रक्चर इज बेसिकली रिजेंबल टू ग्लाइकोजन एंड योर अमाइलोपेक्टिन लेट्स टॉक अबाउट ब्राउन एलगी बेटा इन ब्राउन एलगी इट इज लेमिनेरिन और मैनीटोल इट इज लेमिनेरिन और मैनीटोल विच इज नाथिंग बट द शुगर एल्कोहल विच इज नाथिंग बट द शुगर एल्कोहल सो द सेल्स ऑफ ब्राउन एलगी स्टोर बेसिकली फूड इन द फॉर्म ऑफ शुगर एल्कोहल सो दीज आर द पिगमेंट्स एंड द फूड प्रेजेंट इन साइड द सेल ऑफ ग्रीन एलगी रेड एलगी एंड ब्राउन एलगी लेट्स टॉक अबाउट दे आर फ्लैजुला लेट्स टॉक अबाउट दे आर फ्लैजुला बेटा फ्लैजुला आर प्रेजेंट ऑन जू स्पोर्ट्स एंड गेमीट्स हेयर फ्लैजुला आर प्रेजेंट ऑन जू स्पोर्ट्स एंड गेमीट हेयर बेटा जू स्पोर आर द फॉर्म ऑफ ए सेक्शुअल रिप्रोडक्शन दे आर इन्वॉल्व इन ए सेक्शुअल रिप्रोडक्शन वे आर गेमीट्स आर इन्वॉल्व इन सेक्शुअल रिप्रोडक्शन यू ऑल नो जू स्पोर्ट्स आर इन्वॉल्व इन ए सेक्शुअल रिप्रोडक्शन एंड गेमीट्स आर इन्वॉल्व इन सेक्शुअल रिप्रोडक्शन लेट्स टॉक अबाउट वट हैपन्स इन और वट टाइप ऑफ फ्लैजुला और हाउ मेनी फ्लैजुला प्रेजेंट इन ग्रीन एलगी टू टू एट equal flagella position is apical which means they are present on the tip position is apical which means the flagella are present at the tip of the cell rhodophyce remember no flagella they are devoid of flagella remember no cell of red algae has flagella this is a very 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 important point This is a very important point that rhodophyce they don't have flagella. How sad they don't have flagella. Now coming to the cells of brown algae, they have two unequal laterally present flagella. Lateral flagella. they have nothing but lateral flagella they have lateral flagella which means flagella are present flagella are present here like this flagella are present like this and the cell is pear shaped and the cell is pear shaped and the cell is pear shaped right next we are talking about sexual reproduction here beta in sexual reproduction basically in chlorophyce it is uh, basically isogamous and isogamous and oogamous so reproduction in chlorophyce can be iso anaiso and oogamous let's talk about rhodophyce in rhodophyce it could be isogamous uh sorry it is always oogamous which is most advanced type of oogamous remember in rhodophyce male and female gametes both are non motile male and female gametes both are non motile male and female gamete both are non motile let's talk about pheophyce beta it can also be isogamous isogamous means when both the gametes are similar and isogamous means when both the gametes are slightly different or oogamous when there is a very large female gamete and a very small male gamete right so this pheophyce can have isogamous and isogamous and oogamous right so now we'll discuss about next ab uh, i'll show you some of the green algae so here you can see the three green algae the first one is volvox first one is volvox it like to live in colony so it is a colonial algae 
here you can see the parent colony and this dark green one is daughter colony right and here is the one cell of volvox here is an individual cell of volvox this is the tube like filamentous algae spirogyra it is an it is a filamentous algae right and this is the chlamydomonas which is a unicellular algae it is a chlamydomonas unicellular algae beta all here are green algae this is a green algae spirogyra is a green algae chlamydomonas is a green algae another example of filamentous algae is r ectocarpus which is a brown algae and eulothrix which is a green algae so another example of filamentous algae is ectocarpus and eulothrix so these are the example of green algae next we'll see the red algae this is the red algae porphyra red algae this is beta fucus fucus is a brown algae right sometime they ask you from which algae do you extract agar so agar is obtained from cell wall of gelidium and gracilaria gelidium and gracilaria both are red algae so agar can be obtained from the cell wall of gelidium and gracilaria gelidium and agar is commercially used uh to form jellies ice cream and also used in laboratories to grow micro organism so this is where we end algae now we'll start with bryophytes bryophytes what are bryophytes beta bryophytes they were the first terrestrial plants they were the first plant that live on land they were the first embryophytes they were the first plant to form embryo right and they are known as amphibians of plant kingdom because they require water for sexual reproduction they live on land but still they require water for sexual reproduction that's why they are known as amphibians of plant kingdom there are two types of bryophytes liverworts and mosses so i'm going to tell you her liverworts example of liverworts is marchantia they are the lower bryophytes they are the lower bryophytes the bry bryophytes that first came so as you know that bryophytes also their main body is gametophyte their main body is also gametophyte which means their main body is haploid and produce gamete their main body is haploid and produce gamete right so suppose this is their main body gametophyte haploid and it will have male sex organ and female sex, sex organ this is archegonium female sex organ this is enthridium it is also haploid it is the male sex organ so as you know archegonium will produce female gamete which is non motile it cannot move 
whereas anthridium will produce male gamete it can move it is non motile it is having two flagella it is the motile cell so of course the male gamete will come towards the female gamete and they will fuse right so male gamete will fuse towards will swim towards the female gamete the male gamete swim towards the female gamete fertilization occur when haploid haploid cell mix they form zygote zygote become diploid zygote will be formed into embryo they were the first embryophytes because they were the first one to form embryo beta embryo is produced or develop into a structure known as sporophyte and that sporophyte develops on the main body so this is the gametophyte which is haploid a sporophyte will be produced here this is sporophyte beta which is diploid so sporophyte is somehow parasitic that is formed on the parent body to get the nutrition and this is capsule beta this is capsule capsule is also diploid because it is a part of sporophyte n here is haploid and 2n is diploid capsule will undergo meiosis meiosis is a type of cell division it will form spores that are haploid now these spores will disperse and germinate into new body these spores will be dispersed from the capsule the capsule will open and disperse these spores the capsule will open and disperse these spores this is how this is how the, this is how the life cycle of liverworts look like right now i'm going to show you the liverwort here this is marcantia beta as you can see marcantia has two separate body this is the female body and this is the male body female body has archegonia lots of archegonia plural is archegonia singular is archegonium and male have anthridium male have anthridium their body also have gamma cup their body also have gamma cup so beta this is gamma cup and over gamma cup there is gamma that help in asexual reproduction so this is gamma cup and this is gamma that is a multicellular asexual bud so whenever this gamma is ready it will be detached from the parent body it can be found over the female or male because it is a asexual bud it does not matter right so it is an asexual bud it does not matter so whenever the bud is ready it will be detached from the body and the form the new plant this is porella this is another plant known as porella this is marcantia this is porella now the second group of bryophytes are mosses they are slightly complicated or they are basically more complicated than the liverworts they are more differentiated than the liverworts they are more advanced than the liverworts they are more advanced than liverworts right example of mosses are funeria sphagnum right 
सो वट हैपन्स हेयर इज देर मेन बॉडी इज गेमीटो फाइट बेटा जनरली दे आर गेमीटो फाइट लुक्स लाइक दिस दिस इज द मेन बॉडी दिस इज द एंड दिस इज द लीफ and this is the root like structure right this is the main axis this is leaf like structure there is no leaf proper leaf in bryophyte but leaf like structure these are rhizoids which are root like structure they are not proper root here they are multicellular and in liverworts because they are less advanced they are less advanced here rhizoids are unicellular so in liverworts rhizoids are unicellular in mosses rhizoids are multicellular remember the gametophyte is haploid their whole body is haploid now beta they will have enthridium or archegonium they have male and female sex organ archegonium will produce female gamete which is non motile and it will produce male gamete which is motile it will it will be having two flagella the male gamete will swim towards the female gamete and fertilization take place for after fertilization they form the zygote haploid haploid forms diploid zygote zygote will form embryo and embryo will form sporophyte everything is common or similar till here so this is the main body beta this is the main body and over main body over the main body they will form the sporophyte they will form the sporophyte this is the foot sitta and this is capsule right so remember beta this is the main body this is the gametophyte and this whole structure is parasitic over the main body known as sporophyte so sporophyte is a parasitic on main body now beta as you know this sporophyte it has capsule everything is diploid in sporophyte capsule will undergo meiosis a type of cell division and after meiosis it will form spores and spores upon germination they will be released from the capsule capsule will open it will release the caps spores and spores will form a filamentous structure this is the difference between mosses and liverworts known as protonema this is primary protonema what happens after this this protonema will be divided or fragmented into many parts where each part can form a new protonema this new protonema will be known as secondary protonema this new protonema is known as secondary protonema it has a bud over it this bud beta will be 
germinate into new body so what happens in mosses is spores directly do not germinate into the main body in liverwort spore was directly germinating into the main body here spore is forming a primary protonema filamentous structure that will undergo fragmentation that will undergo fragmentation and small small parts are there where each part forms secondary protonema secondary protonema has a bud over it and the bud can germinate into new body this protonema are haploid that's why they can directly germinate into new body right so this is about the mosses this is about the mosses and how they are different from the liverworts how you can see the funeria here sporophyte over the gametophyte funeria look like the coat that's why it is known as cord moss and this is known as phegnum it has three parts beta it has three names sorry peat moss because we get a product from this sphagnum when the this sphagnum is basically decomposed we get a product known as peat that can be used as a fuel so upon decomposition of sphagnum we get a product known as peat which can be used as a fuel that's why it is known as peat moss they can absorb lots of water when sphagnum is dry it can absorb lots of water that's why it is known as cotton moss they generally grow in a bog area bog means where the marshy acidic condition where the water content is high in the soil and the condition is also acidic so such area is known as bog so acidic marshy area are known as bog because they are grown in a bog area that's why they are also known as bog moss they are also known as bog moss so these are the two mosses funeria and sphagnum so here we complete bryophytes and here's a real picture of funeria and sphagnum and here you can see the sporophyte part clearly see and this is gametophyte part the main body is gametophyte over gametophyte sporophyte are formed sporophyte are formed right i hope this is clear to all of you now you can see the real picture of funeria now next topic is pteridophyte next topic is pteridophyte they were the first plant to have vascular bundle first plants to have vascular bundles xylem and phloem they are also the first plant in which the main body is main body is sporophyte which means their main body does not produce gamete it produces spores their main body is sporophyte so pteridophyte were the first one in which the main body is sporophyte there are two types of pteridophyte homosporous and heterosporous there are two type of pteridophyte homosporous and heterosporous we'll first start with homosporous here most of the pteridophyte are homosporous most of the pteridophytes are homosporous like lycopodium dryopteris lycopodium dryopteris so homosporous most of the pteridophytes are homosporous right remember all bryophytes are homosporous 
ऑल ब्रायोफाइट्स आर होमोस्पोरस वेर इन टेरिडोफाइट मोस्ट बायो मोस्ट टेरिडोफाइट्स आर होमोस्पोरस एंड फ्यू आर हेट्रोस्पोरस लेट सी बेटा देयर मेन बॉडी इज स्पोरोफाइट देयर मेन बॉडी इज स्पोरोफाइट एंड इट हैज अ स्पेशल लीफ दे हैव अ स्पेशल लीव्स Known as porophylls, so they have a special leaf, beta, known as sporo leaf, sporophyll, and these leaf has some spots. These spots are known as sorus. These spots are known as sorus. Sorus has some tissue known as sporangium. Each spot has tissue known as sporangium. Sporangium beta has spore mother cells. Each sporangium or each tissue has spore mother cell. Now these spore mother cell beta undergo meiosis. You have to understand where meiosis is occurring. There are two type of cell division: meiosis and mitosis. You must have studied that in cell cycle and cell division. After meiosis, they form a spores, which are haploid because, as you know, meiosis reduces the chromosome number into half. From diploid, it becomes haploid. Now, spores germinate, release from the body. and germinate it will be released from the parent body and germinate into a structure known as prothallus or gametophyte it is a haploid structure gametophyte so here you can see the size of gametophyte is reduced in algae bryophyte gametophyte is the main body but here the size of gametophyte is reduced it will have archegonium it will have enthridium archegonium will produce female gamete non motile here also female gamete cannot move whereas enthridium produces male gamete which is also haploid but motile the male gamete is motile having lots of flagella here male and female gamete will fuse and form zygote zygote form embryo after fusion the condition will again become diploid and embryo can form a new body embryo can form a new body right so this is what happens in homosporous pteridophyte this is what happens in homosporous pteridophyte let's see what happens in heterosporous pteridophyte i'll give you one minute to understand this this is what happens in homosporous pteridophyte i'll tell you what happens in heterosporous pteridophyte okay so we'll we'll see what happens in heterosporous pteridophytes few are heterosporous pteridophyte few pteridophytes and example you need to remember through mass m a double s marsilia azola salvinia selaginella beta marsilia azola salvinia they are aquatic 
pteridophyte, whereas Legionella is a terrestrial. Legionella is a terrestrial. Remember, pteridophytes are the terrestrial plants. They are mostly terrestrial plants. They are mostly terrestrial plants, but three are aquatic: Marsilia, Azola, and Salvinia. So let's start with their main body. Beta heterosporous means which form two types of spores. Their main body is sporophyte, right? Which is two n. Sporophyte has a special leaf-like structure known as sporophylls. Sporophylls have sorus. Sorus has sporangium sporangium has spore mother cell so what happens here is after meiosis spore mother cell form two types of spore the mega spore and micro spore so after meiosis two type of spores are produced mega and micro that's why it is known as heterosporous mega spore will retain on parent body for some time it will retain on parent body and germinate into female gametophyte germinate into female gametophyte whereas microspore will be released from the parent body it will be released from the parent body it will remain on the parent body for some time but it will be released from the parent body and it will germinate into male gametophyte it will germinate into male gametophyte the female gametophyte has archegonium and it has enthridium right enthridium will form male gamete which is motile and archegonium will produce female gamete which is non motile so what happens here is they will fuse zygote will be formed zygote then embryo and then the main body so what is different here is two type of spores are produced and there is a retainment of female gametophyte on the parent body the female gametophyte remains on parent body for some time for some time there is a retainment of female gametophyte on the parent body for some time it is an important event for the seed formation important event for evolution of seed important event for evolution of seed although they did not form seed although they did not form seed but they showed us the glimpse that how seed could be formed although they did not form the seed but they showed us the event that how seed can be formed in the next group of plant so they did not form the seed but they showed us the glimpse right if the question is asked at which plant basically a uh, showed us a event which can be important for the seed formation that will be heterosporous 
pteridophyte that will be heterosporous pteridophyte so heterosporous pteridophyte were the very important group of plants during the course of evolution of seed because they showed us the glimpse that how seed can be formed i hope this is clear to all of you i'm giving you a minute to understand this Please understand everything. If you have any doubt, you can always let me know in the comment section. Next group of plant is gymnosperm. And before I'm going to show you some pictures of beautiful pteridophytes. This is basically your Selaginella. And Selaginella can form cones. Also known as strobili. What are cones? They are nothing but the aggregation of sporophylls. So sometimes sporophylls they aggregate and form a cone like structure. These are ferns. And what are these spots? These spots are sori. Singular is sorus. I told you these are the special leaf where you can see the sorai. This is salvinia, aquatic fern. Salvinia, aquatic fern. Selaginella and ferns, they are the terrestrial pteridophyte and salvinia is, the, uh, is an aquatic pteridophyte. This is the equisitum beta. Equisitum looks like a horse tail and it is rough like a horse tail that's why it is known as horse tail right and equisitum also form the cone they also form the cone or strobili so there are two plants in pteridophytes that form cone first is selaginella and second is equisitum first is selaginella and second is equisitum i hope this is clear to all of you this is where we end Terido fight. Let's discuss gymnosperm. We are only going to discuss the brief of gymnosperms. Gymnosperms, they have naked seeds. They have naked seeds, which means they produce seeds. So they were the first plants to form seed. They were the first plant to form a seed. Why their seeds are naked? Because seeds don't have fruit. They are not covered by fruit wall. There is no fruit in gymnosperm. There is no flower in gymnosperm. There is no ovary in gymnosperm. There is no flower and there is no ovary that's why there is no fruit no fruit formation occur in gymnosperm but they have ovule they have ovule without flower so they produce seed they produce seed right they were the first plant to form pollen grain They were the first plant to produce pollen grain. Pollen grain is nothing but the male gametophyte. Pollen grain, they produce or they have male gametes. That's why they are known as male gametophyte. Remember, as we proceed towards the higher plants, there's a note. As we proceed towards the higher plant, Size of gametophyte decreases. So as you can remember, the algae main body is gametophyte, bryophyte main body is gametophyte. 
when we go to teidophyte the size of gametophyte decreases then again decreases in gymnosperm and it will again decrease in angiosperm so when we go from algae to angiosperm the size of gametophyte decreases so i'll show you some pictures of beautiful gymnosperms this is pinus pines you mostly find it in hill station this is cycas a good ornamental plant that you can see in any universities or schools here this is ginkgo biloba ginkgo biloba is also known as the fossil living fossil because it is the only member basically uh, only member remained in their group right so ginkgo biloba belongs to ginkgo ales group and it is the only member survived so that's why it is known as uh what we call living fossil and here you can see some cones right this is the male cone in male cycas plant female cycas plant don't form a cone they form these are the sporophylls because these are the female sporophyll we call it mega sporophylls female sporophylls right they don't form cone they don't form cone in cycas this is the female plant of cycas so cycas has two separate plant female and male where male has male cone but female don't have the female cone similarly here in pinus you can see the female cone which is a aggregation of mega sporophylls and male cone which is an aggregation of microsporophyll microsporophyll is a male sporophyll and mega sporo uh, me mega sporophyll is a female sporophyll right and this is a pinus plant both are present on the same plant unlike cycas cycas has a separate plant for male and female here pinus are have same plant for male and female part same plant for male and female plant there is a note here beta remember all gymnosperms are heterosporous they produce two type of spores they were the first plants that produced two types of spores which means all the plants produce two types of spore whereas pteridophyte only few produce two type of spore but in gymnosperm they were the first one in which all the member produce two types of spores and the last is gymnosperm beta angiosperm sorry angiosperms they have flower they were the first one to have flower they have ovary they have ovule the fruit and seeds are formed right their female gametophyte is known as embryo sac and their male gametophyte is known as pollen grain so they also produce pollen grain their male gametophyte is pollen grain and their female gametophyte is embryo sac and remember all angiosperms are heterosporous all produces two types of spores right and now there are two classes of angiosperms there are two classes of angiosperms monocot and dicot 
Embryo having one cotyledon is known as monocot. Embryo having two dicot is known as dicot. Example of monocot is wheat, rice, sugar cane, maize, etc. Example of dicot is sunflower, potato. mustard etc so these are two classes of angiosperm so angiosperms are the most advanced plant they are the most advanced plant so most lowest plant is algae and the most advanced plant is angiosperm and among angiosperm monocots are more advanced remember among angiosperms monocots are more advanced among angiosperms monocots are the most advanced plant monocots are the most advanced plant so this is about a brief about angiosperm I hope this is clear to all of you. So now let's solve some questions. Male gametophyte is flagellated in, which means motile in. Ectocarpus, yes. Spirogyra, no, beta. The male and female sex organ are non-motile. Sorry, male and female gametes are similar. and non motile anavena is a bacteria bacteria do not have sexual reproduction and polysiphonia is a red algae and i told you in red algae no flagella is there i told you in red algae no flagella is there so answer will be ectocarpus polysiphonia is red algae no flagella anabana is a bacteria in bacteria there are no gametes pyrogyra both the gametes are non motile the isogamous condition isogamic means similar male and female gamete similar male and female gametes non flagellated means no flagella i just told you the answer of this here the similar gametes without flagella answer will be spirogyra answer will be spirogyra well gametes are similar and non motile next is from evolutionary point of view retention of female gametophyte on the parent body i told you it is pteridophyte and among pteridophyte it is heterosporous pteridophyte so hetero uh, heterosporous pteridophytes are the important in the evolution of seed because they showed us the glimpse how seed can be formed but they did not form seeds themselves because the next group of plant that is gymnosperms produced the seed for the first time they showed us the glimpse only which one of the following is correct ovary are not enclosed by ovary wall in gymnosperm yes they have naked seed selaginella is heterosporous salvinia is homosporous no beta salvinia is also a heterosporous pteridophyte remember mass marsilia azola salvinia selaginella horsetail are gymnosperms no horsetail are pteridophytes horse tail means equisetum equisetum is a pteridophyte stem are unbranched in cycas yes but cedrus has branched stem cedrus has branched stem cedrus has branched stem so here you can see only statement 1 is correct only statement 1 is correct second third and fourth are incorrect second third and fourth are incorrect i hope everything is clear to you guys 
so i hope every topic is crystal clear to all of you i'll see you in the next lecture till then take care everyone and please solve as many as question you can so i'll see you in the next lecture till then take care everyone